YouTube won't stop flooding my recommendations with woke black people bullshit. Well, guess what? The prosecution channel doesn't worship any sacred cows. If you're going to try and force feed us low quality, tiny brained woke takes, you better prepare for pushback. If you believe that when black people take a shit, it doesn't stink, then you're wrong. Sorry, YouTube. Jarvis Johnson. This is a guy with exactly 100 videos on his channel. He seems to have started his channel talking about his work as a software engineer. He then transitioned to making videos about complete bullshit. How in the fuck does this guy have the same number of subscribers as Red Letter Media? I think we're about to find out. As a black man, uh, I'm black by the way, surprise. Apparently uh, there are people who follow me that don't know that. I'm, to be honest, a bit numb seeing people who, who look like me and my family killed by the police uh, with, with basically no consequences. What about the astronomically higher number of people who look like you that are killed by black gang members? Do you just not care about those people? And what do you mean with no consequences? You do realize the officers involved in George Floyd's death are being criminally prosecuted, right? Before we get into today's video, I uh, just wanted to throw out a little disclaimer that I initially like wrote it and shot it before the tragic police killing of George Floyd and the protests that have rightfully erupted uh, in response, which I'll say I am very much in support of. Ah yes, George Floyd, the greatest black man to have ever lived. When he robs defenseless women at gunpoint, he does it with kindness in his heart. I'm really encouraged to see uh, to see the response. I'm going to monetize this video, and I'm planning to donate all of the the money that it makes to uh, various causes uh, associated with protecting Black lives. If you have any recommendations for those, let me know in the comments below. My recommendation was the American Lung Association. That is because number one. 480,000 people die every year in the United States of smoking. Using population statistics, that would end up amounting to 64,320 black lives lost. Number two. Deaths caused by cigarette smoke are 100% preventable. Meanwhile, homicides caused by rogue cops who murder people are 0% preventable. Likewise, homicides caused by cops who happen to have mistaken perceptions are also 0% preventable. Number 3. Black men disproportionately die of smoking. This means that the number of dead blacks each year by tobacco smoke is actually higher than 64,000. Number 4. Only 7,407 blacks were murdered in the United States in 2018. By comparison, only 229 black people were shot and killed by police. As far as I can tell, all 229 of those killings were justified given the circumstances. Number 5. If your real objective was to save black lives, you would be a fool to give money to Black Lives Matter. Instead, give it to the American Lung Association to help people quit smoking. We'll also be linking a number of resources in the description. This shit is unacceptable, uh, and we've lived with it for long enough. So I'm glad to see that the national response has been strong. This video is about Papa John, which uh, doesn't seem like it would be that related to the current moment. I'm sorry, but I can't not point this out. Why does a grown ass man have braces? I've never seen this before. He is clearly an adult man. I mean, he worked at Google as a software engineer. I'm not trying to be an asshole here. If he needs braces, then fine. It's just weird. 
It's like a commentary video on a commentary video, so it's meta. I just wanna say because I know uh, a lot of my audience isn't black, and I may be like one of the only black people that you even know or listen to, I ha have dealt with, with racism all my life, and it's very much not uh, gone. Oh, I'm sure that this guy's life has been real hard. The struggle of working as a software engineer at Google and then quitting your job to make millions of dollars on YouTube. Getting 1.8 million subscribers by recording yourself talking about bullshit. What a tough life. Contrary to what some uh, people believe, it's not. It's very much here, and if you don't see it, uh, you may just be uh, blind to it. And that's a, that's a privilege th th that you may have. Hmm. I guess I'm the privileged one, guys. You know, with my tiny YouTube channel that took me two years to build. When I worked as a software engineer, I was also very often the only black person in the space. And as I, you know, built up my platform on YouTube, some of the beginnings of that were talking about my career. And very often uh, I would get people, you know, saying that, I only got to where I got because of affirmative action. Now, I'm not an engineer. I don't know enough about this guy to pass judgment on him in regards to that. As a YouTuber, however, I'm skeptical. I don't see why this guy's content would attract the same number of subscribers as Red Letter Media. Unless, of course, YouTube had a biased, racist algorithm fun to be an edgelord until until people are hurt. I'm fine. I benefit from a number of privileges myself, being a straight man. How is being a straight man a privilege? Have you ever tried online dating? Straight women and gay men are privileged. Being a straight man is living life on expert difficulty. I want to make sure that I use my platform to uh, to echo the voices of those who are often unheard. Um. George Floyd is not exactly unknown or unheard. He's an international celebrity at this point. If, as a passionate black man, you want to help black people, why not give a voice to the thousands of black people killed by black criminals? I encourage those who want to share their stories uh, with, you know, systemic oppression and, and racism or the police to do so. Okay, let me give you my story. Every day YouTube recommends I watch videos made by blacks pushing anti-white race-based narratives. I have myself created several countless thoughtful intellectual videos on race. YouTube does not promote them. That is my experience with systemic racism. About a man who built a cheesy empire, brick by brick oven, but was discarded by society and thrown away like a perfectly good but uneaten pizza crust. What's a man to do when he's fallen from grace? Uh, beats me, <laughs> but Papa John started a TikTok, so let's talk about that. Yo, Papa here. Papa John has a TikTok now, and it's as bad or good as his pizza is. I guess it just depends on your personal pan preference. But before we get too deep dish into these TikToks, I'd like to unbox a, a few slices of Papa John's backstory. Also, I have a few more pizza puns in the oven, so uh, I hope you're hot and ready. Holy shit, these pizza puns are cringe. Now, I myself like to try and put jokes in my videos, but good God, if it ever gets this bad, someone needs to do something about it. Please. As the story goes, John Schnatter sold his prized 1971 Camaro to buy a pizza oven to put in his father's tavern. So it's a rags to riches story we can all relate to. You know, in these difficult times, a lot of people are looking for advice on how to pull themselves up by their own bootstraps. Uh, so life hack, sell your prized 1971 Camaro. What I could find suggests that a 1971 Camaro sells for around $50,000. That's not exactly a generous amount of capital to start a business. 
poor high school graduates looking to go to college would probably qualify for around $50,000 worth of student loans, if not more. Safe to say that things were spreading like wood fire and Papa John was bringing home the bread sticks. Much like this pizza dough in his immaculately flowered hands, things took a turn for Papa around 2012. After running his mouth like I run my mouth along a cheesy slice of za, John Schnatter, that's, that's his name, Schnatter, found himself in some spicy marinara uh, when it arose that he didn't pay his employees that well and their health care wasn't great. This is true of every retail store fast food restaurant in America. Papa John's has to compete against Domino's, Pizza Hut, would-be other local pizza chains, Little Caesars, etc. While I don't like how America's economy works, it's BS for Jarvis to single out Papa John. Yeah, police brutality f***ing sucks and it's a huge problem in our country. I just want to reiterate my support for everyone protesting the uh, horrific killing of George Floyd, police brutality. Uh. Again, citing my statistics from earlier, 64,000 blacks die every year from smoking tobacco. 7,000 blacks are murdered, mostly by black criminals. Only around 200 are killed by police officers. Something like 95% of the 200 are determined to be justified. The Black Lives Matter movement is bullshit. The numerous victims that unarmed black victims who have been killed by police in America. Last week, Tucker Carlson pointed out on his show that after researching the Washington Post database, only 14 unarmed black people were killed by police in 2019. There were a few that were probably justified, but questionable. The rest were clearly justified. Papa John said that the players kneeling was having uh, a negative impact on pizza sales, and if they didn't stop, then uh, pizza prices were going to go up. Uh, yeah, Papa John ran a business. People buy pizza when they're watching football games. If you put political bullshit into a football game, you will piss off half the country. That's bad for business. And I say this as someone who has a deep love for political bullshit. I like watching and reading about politics, but it doesn't belong in the NFL. Papa needed the dough from needing dough, and the players were kneeling for their needs though, so Papa said this kneeling needs to go or else pizza prices are going to grow. But once his board members saw his statements of nothing apropos, they said, no, Papa, no. That was awful. You can criticize Papa John for being rich and concerned with making money, but that's his job as the CEO. I mean, his own company that was named after him conducted a coup against him and ousted him from the company. I think he has a legitimate reason to make sure the money keeps flowing in. These professional athletes who want to disrespect the flag are also rich. They are the luckiest people in our society. They get paid handsomely to play a game. They're not oppressed. The final straw for Dear Papa was in May 2018 when during a conference call with a marketing agency, uh, Papa John was discussing Colonel Sanders' use of the N-word. Papa said that he had personally never used the word himself, all while using the word himself. I, 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 would, I would never say I hate that word. I just, I just think is this is such a bad word. Uh, you know who loved using though, is Colonel Sanders. <laughs> that guy would throw around all the live long day. Uh, but not me, though. <laughs> I'd never use it. We've arrived at the ultimate issue. Papa John getting fired from his own company was bullshit. Did he use the N-word? Yes. Does that make him a racist? No. Why not? He was using the word in order to say that the word itself was racist and to condemn Colonel Sanders for using the word. In other words, he was pointing out that he didn't agree with the use of the word. He also quoted someone else who said it for the purpose of condemning that person. This kerfuffle led to Papa John being uh, all but completely ousted from the Papa John company. Uh, you see, 
up until this point, he was still the chairman of the board of trustees and the CEO was his best friend. So that whole removing him as CEO. Yeah, the company he worked decades of his life to build up was taken from him for a bullshit reason. Now, a grown man with braces wearing a Rugrats t-shirt is going to mock him for this. Go fuck yourself. Imagine if YouTube was biased the opposite way that it is. In this alternate reality, I get YouTube to hand over Jarvis's channel to me because he was criticizing a Black Lives Matter person for saying we should kick out all the whiteies. Now that I have his channel, I start laughing at him and calling him a racist. I then also suggest he needs to be further isolated from society. And without millions of dollars of media training to keep him from saying stupid shit, Papa was unleashed. His first order of business was to become a bigger meme than he already was. So to accomplish this, he hopped on his local Fox affiliate and uh, let everybody know that Papa John sucks now. I'm calling bullshit. Ethan Klein, who is a Democrat, who supported Andrew Yang and Bernie Sanders, had Papa John on his podcast. They tested the pizza and Klein validated Papa John's conclusion. Wow, that was a treasure, a treat. So, I mean, what was your overall impression? I think the, the presentation was good, but there's a real crust issue going on here. It's an epidemic, I would say. Uh, it's on, I would say it's the new, the coronavirus of Papa John's. Well, you know, uh, as Ray Kroc said, your quality is only as good as your consistency. Right. And <clears throat> what you saw here is bad habits. Right. But they're consistent. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you want to get the point where you're doing the right things uh, in a very consistent way. I don't know if this is obvious yet, but Papa John is a raging narcissist. <laughs> I mean, uh, who else would name their restaurant after themselves? Tyler Perry. Ooh. Why is Papa John on TikTok in the first place? Uh, in all honesty, I have no idea. It seems like it has something to do with plugging his merch. Maybe because his company was stolen from him and he's desperate to find a way to make money? I know this may be hard for you to understand as a black man. You're blinded by your black privilege. When you are white and you're fired for alleged racism, you are basically excommunicated from society. Papa John has a TikTok because it's all he has left. He will never get a job somewhere else. He will never be offered a redemption arc. Instead of trying to exile him entirely from society, let him have what little he has left in this world. Yeah, your pizza's fine, but the topping's like, whoa, she said she wanted pineapple and ham. It's like, whoa, don't eat those things. His merch is in, ev he's wearing his own merch in every single TikTok. And all of his merch is based on memes of himself, uh, which I, it's just strange. It's so strange how desperate he is to make money. It's so strange how hard he works doing embarrassing things to try and avoid losing everything. If only a bank could give him a loan to start a new company. But yeah, banks won't give loans to races. Should Papa John be banned off TikTok? Hell no. I say that it's high time that we make shitty chain pizza great again. Let Papa John become the Steve Jobs of pizza. Fuck Colonel Sanders. Fuck Jarvis Johnson. Papa John should be the CEO of Papa John's. Anyways, that's all I've got to say for this video. Support small YouTube channels like mine by subscribing to them. Thanks.